it's always good, and I, I never get tired of saying it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's always good to spend time praising God. Yes. You know, uh, <clears throat> one of the Psalms that, it, it ends the Psalm, the book of Psalms, is Psalms 150. But I like the fact it starts this way, Psalms 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the heavens of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to the abundance of His greatness. Praise Him with the trumpet sound. Praise Him with the lute and harp. Praise Him with tambourine, single or group dance. Praise Him with string, wind instruments or flutes. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud classical cymbals. Let everything that has breath and every breath of life praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That's really where life starts. That's really where the change comes in your life when you take time to praise the Lord. Sometimes what happens is when things go well, oh, we'll praise the Lord. But even in good times, bad times, we need to praise the Lord and remember Him. <clears throat> I, I was thinking about my dad and <clears throat> excuse me, his favorite song of all was Precious Lord. That was just his favorite song. He wanted sung at his funeral. And this, this lady sang it, and, and the words, I, I just, to, to know, he, he wasn't one that went to church every Sunday. He'd show up at basket dinners, Thanksgiving dinner or something. You know, he wouldn't. But at the end of his life, he got his life right with the Lord. I remember he, he said, Tim, I want to go to church. This is probably a month or so before he passed away, but I want to go to church. Got his suit on and took him to church, and the pastor was getting ready to preach. He raised his hand up. Yes, Mr. Hatton, I want to say something. And kind of help him stand. And I just said, I won't come here today to praise the Lord. I want to praise the Lord. He didn't say, he didn't stand up a whole lot and say a lot, but I want to praise the Lord. I knew he got his life right. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and I remember going over and hugging him. And I remember this song, Precious Lord. Because when they sang it at his funeral, that's what he meant. He knew how precious the Lord was to get him through all of the life he went through. When I was a teenager, he had heart attacks, he had diabetes, he had all these health problems, and he couldn't work like he used to. He was always a workhorse providing for the family. But I knew that he knew the Lord got him through all of that. And I like to start this kind of something I, I tend to do when I'm up here, but precious Lord, I like these verses because they get deep down inside of you, you know? Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Let me stand. I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm lone. Through the storm, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my light is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call. Hold my hands lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone, at the river I stand. Guide my feet, hold my hand. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on. Let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm lone through the storm, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home, lead me home. When you get a picture of the Lord leading you, He's going to lead you through every part of your life. That's what I was doing today, you know, the, as I'm teaching the students. One thing I do is like to pray that God guide me through that. You know, it's like we, we have one back maneuver. It's probably the most difficult of all, and I was out there doing it today. But I've learned to just pray, God help me. You know, I've had the training, and God help me, you can do this. Tim, why wouldn't you ask me to help you to do that, right? And I thought, that's why don't we go to God more and ask Him to help us in those areas. He wants to. You know, He wants to be there for you. You know, in, in, in Deuteronomy, uh, I want to read this. The Deuteronomy in chapter uh, uh, 7 and verse 6, I just love this because this tells you about the heart of God. Deuteronomy 6, uh, chapter 7, verse 6. And this is the Amplified. And, and God is talking to his people. For you are a holy and set apart people to the Lord your God. 
The Lord your God has chosen you to be a special people to himself out of all the peoples on the face of the earth. Think about that. How much God loves you. Again, talk about the precious Lord. The Lord did not set his love upon you, this is verse 7, or choose because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loves you. Hallelujah. Because the Lord loves you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn to your fathers. And the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand. Hallelujah. And redeemed you out of the house of bondage and from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know, recognize, and understand, therefore, that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love and mercy to, with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Hallelujah. That's what we ought to realize how much God loves us. Never lose fact of that. No matter what you're going through, God is precious. He cares about you. And that for that fact alone, we ought to praise him daily, every day. We ought to pray to him. Realize our creator, creator loves us that much. Never lose sight of his love. That's what I found when people get their eyes off the Lord. Man, they can get to thinking about a lot of stuff. One of the things, I wonder if the Lord is going to come through. I wonder if the Lord is going to come through. I wonder if he's going to come through. I said, well, he came through before. What makes you think he's not going to come through this time? We serve the same God. He, what he said, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? Amen. And when, when Jesus went up in, in, in the heaven and ascension, he said, this same Jesus not a different the same Jesus you're going to come down one day this same Jesus so we always want to remember that one thing that Jesus said that I always love he said in John 8 29 at the end of it, I always do those things that please the father and that's always our heart what pleases the father is praise him what pleases the father is being obedient to him he loves us so much let us never lose sight of that God we love you. We come here to praise you. We come here to lift you up. If you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. That's where God wants to see that his people just praise him and lift him up. And, you know, if we get an image of God like Isaiah got, I saw him high and lifted up, his train filled the, the temple, and you see his glory, and just get an image of how much he loves it. That just keeps coming up tonight. It says, just realize God set you apart. God has a plan for your life. Just remember, He's a precious Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to open this up with prayer, requests, and praises. Because God is so good, and we always got something to praise Him for. We always do. Yes, Pastor. Uh, praise the Lord. I know you and I were talking before church, but I got a text message from my granddaughter. Telling me how excited she was and what God was doing in her life. And her and her husband were just baptized the 7th of April. And she sent it to Sally and I a, a video of their baptism. And it's just, uh, I'm just so thankful to the Lord. I couldn't stop thanking all of you yesterday. Just thinking of uh, these two generations, you know. Right. And you know how far back this goes and how far forward. There's no end. I mean, I don't know. When the Lord will return, if it's not in my lifetime, I have every reason to believe that me and my house will be saved. Hallelujah. And I'm just so thankful for the faithfulness of God Hallelujah. and His great love for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. Yeah, we talk about He loves you to a thousand generations. And when yeah. you see your kids and grandkids, and like we were sharing that, you know, my granddaughter's going to be baptized and, 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 and I just remember when she was born. Yeah. And you and remember those all those hours that you pray for them. Mm -hmm. And they want to get baptized. They want to get to know the Lord more. Yeah. You know, I'm, I mean, what greater gift can you give your kids or grandkids? And that's the love of God. Right. You know, things, I mean, things fade away. I mean, you, can, you know, you can get houses and cars and clothes and all that stuff. But when we're talking about something eternal, you know, something that will change your life forever. You know, and if they end up knowing the creator, God, that can be with them long after you're gone. I, I was thinking about my grandmother, you know, and, and that's the first recollection I, recollection I ever have in church. 
I remember clear back sitting on her lap in church. That's what I remember. And it was Wright's Temple was the church. It's still there today. She was like one of the founding members. And I got saved through that ministry in that church. And and, and I, every time I go by there, when we go down to visit, I like to drive by there and remember those good memories that 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 people's lives got changed under that ministry and goes clear back to grandma and before that and just that she loved the Lord. I remember mom having a big family Bible. They used to do that a lot in oh, homes. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we didn't have but two TV stations. and Kids always laugh yeah. now. You had two right. TV stations. And one of them was kind of shaky, you know. <laughs> you know, I had to use the rabbit ears and aluminum foil when ABC come in. We could barely get ABC. We didn't have no cable TV, you know. You know, you had to meet. Grandpa, you had to actually change it by hand. Oh, man, y'all was poor, wasn't you? Hey, you didn't have no remote control. Yeah, remote control, you get up and change it yourself. That's what happened. Yeah, we didn't have none of that stuff, you know. Now you have 150 channels and all that stuff. But those days when you shut the TV off. And you sat there. And we'd have Bible study in our home. And mom, God bless her. I got a picture sent to her from way back. And, and I was thinking, we, we had, uh, mom, we'd have Sunday school sometime at, at home. And she would stand up like she's at church. She, we had to answer questions, yeah. you know. And, and she would st raise her hand up there. We at the house. You know, she'd stand up and she would answer that question. She loved studying the Bible. And, you know, kids like that. They like hearing stories from the Bible. They like, they like that the, the people pray with them. I'm telling you, kids will, they'll correspond. They, they'll, they'll get involved with that, you know. They like to hear those stories. They like to hear about God. If you give them an opportunity. Because once they get down in their soul, can God do that? Can God do that? He said, for with God, all things are possible. Really? Can he do that? Let me tell you, some people don't know that. Some people absolutely don't know that. And when we know that, I tell you what, we should never lose sight of that. Right. Never lose sight of that. There's things out there now. Our youngest grandkids are seven, uh, six, and five, and they're babies a few months, or six months old. But whenever they're over, we'll play a game for that game play. One of them is go fish, but it's the Bible go fish. Hallelujah. And every time you pull up a card, whatever that number is, it will have a little promise from God. God, Hallelujah. thank you, God, for loving my family. Thank you, God, for giving me the best. Just. It's a constant reminder. You don't have to be religious about it. It's just yeah. a constant reminder that there is a God, that He is involved in their life, and He does care about them. And they they get excited about it. If they miss, they get a card and forget to say it. They'll want to back the whole game up. You know, I didn't, I didn't say the great. You know, I didn't get say the great. So yeah. it's it's fun. It's, it's exciting to see that just little seeds. Even then, I think that about the Sunday school here. Sometimes it is theology so much. I mean, the theology will come. It's the first thing I know that there is a God. That's right. And that He loves them. And uh, if we can get that instilled in the kids, God and the Holy Spirit can deal with them all the time. And they'll, they'll, they'll come around. I think it's just exciting. That, as you said, even as little kids, I know our neighbor. I'm just rambling on. I don't think I'm But uh, a couple weeks ago, when they, they were working on the gas line out here, a fellow left me a note. And, like, the next day, I called him. Anyhow, got to talking about the Lord. Come to find out, my next door neighbor, Pauline Clark, who was a really a great Christian. In fact, she was a, a huge influence in my life as a kid. My parents believed in God, but they weren't really, you know, they weren't active in the church and stuff. They sent us and so forth. But she was a real strong believer. And she prayed for me and for her son every morning before we go to school. I go over here and they live right across the yard, you know. I go over never let us leave that house before she had prayer for us. Hallelujah. Just as a five, six, seven year old kid. You know? And I watched her live her life consistently. I mean, I'd go to church with her occasionally. In the summertime, we'd go to that little camp with her once in a while. Right? But this, this fellow that I was talking to, uh, he had, you know, we got to talk about different things, and he asked where I was from. And I told him, well, he said, well, did you know when he was trying to think of her name? And I said, Molly Clark. He said, yes, yes, did you know her? They went to the Church of Christ, and uh, he said, oh, gosh, she was a great lady, you know. And so it's just weird how God brings, how small the world is, you know. Right. And, 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 and how believers can be brought together. We had a great time talking about the Lord, just sharing different experiences, you know, over the years. And it helped his day, and it made my day, too. It wasn't just a hassle of having to deal with the gas line and all the rest of the stuff. But, it, you know, it just reminds 
reminded me of so many things uh, when I was a kid, how God had That's right. intervened you know, in different ways that I didn't understand at the time. Yeah. But looking back, I can see where God was touching my life all along. Yeah. And I think that's true of all of us. We just kind of forget sometimes about all those different situations. Yeah. God was good. And thank you for sharing, because that, that, we don't know the impact we have on others. I, I remember we was in Keokuk, and, and uh, we was eating at the high vee <clears throat> on a Sunday afternoon, and a big church family came in. I mean, this big family, there was probably 20 of them, and they put the tables together, you know. And what I liked about it is they didn't make a spectacle of it, you know, but they all bowed their head and prayed. They joined hands. They didn't make a spectacle. They didn't sit down for prayer. But you know there was something powerful in that testimony that then they joined hands, the little kids, grandpa, grandpa, and they rounded it and they, and they prayed in high V, you know. And I remember just, it, it, you know, people seemed to be respectful. I mean, it wasn't nobody, oh, they shouldn't be praying here in the store. Nobody seemed to do it. It just seemed like it got, you know, everybody's respect them, let them do their prayer. Yeah. But what a testimony yeah. when you bow your head and acknowledge because Jesus did that when he broke the bread. You remember that? He's break, he gave thanks. Well, that tells us we ought to give thanks. Right. I'm telling you, with that, those little testimonies like that are when, when you take time to pray over somebody. Like I, I used to do it all the time when I hauled furniture. They'd ask me at the end of the day, what you know, what do you want from us? Do you want you know, something to eat or nothing? I usually wouldn't get nothing to eat, but I like to pray with your family. Would you mind in doing that? And I never forget Houston. I know I shared this before. But this lady had a 15-year-old daughter, 15, 14. And I said, I would just like to pray for your family. Now, this shocked me, 14, 15. You know what she said? I've never prayed for you. I mean, that shocked me. Think you're a teenager, 14, 15, and you never prayed with them? You know? Well, let's start something new right now. Let's start something new. And we prayed. And maybe that got them going, you know. But, hey, he believes in it. He comes clear from Iowa down there in Houston, Texas, and he talks about God, maybe we ought to start thinking about God, you know? Yeah. And, and and so being a testimony, I tell you, is 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 worth that's what we're here for. To represent Christ. Amen. Okay. Someone else? Yes, Ron. You've talked about family and everything and thinking back home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, we're going to do that. We're going to go in there. Remember our nation, we're supposed to pray for our leaders. You know, those, those in authority, we need to pray for them, that God will guide them. Okay, um, that's all. Can we go ahead and stand for prayer, please? Oh, Father God, we come to you because you are God. You are more than able to take care of these situations as we lift up our nation, as we lift up our president, as we lift up the, all those situations that are happening in our country. Father God, Lord, you see what's going on. Lord, we ask you to take care of these situations, Lord. We ask you to move in the, in the different people's hearts, Lord. You're more than able, Lord, that there's so much chaos. And, and I know, Lord, you're about unity. Hallelujah, Lord, we just, you said, behold how good it is, brethren, to dwell together in unity. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to turn these situations around, Lord. Turn these hearts around. Turn them back to God, because that's what everybody needs, to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. 
That one time they asked Peter, where should we go? Where should we go? You have the words of eternal life. Where are we supposed to go? But to you, Jesus. You are the Messiah. You are the chosen one. Hallelujah. You are the one we've been looking for. It's all about Jesus. Oh, Father God, Lord, we thank you for that, that pastor's granddaughter. We, we thank you for them being baptized, Lord. Oh, how that's the answer to prayer, to see their lives change. Lord, we thank you for our kids and our grandkids because you know what? We're never going to give up on them. Hallelujah. We're always going to be like that prodigal son's father who looked for him every day. Is he coming home today? Is he coming home today? Oh, Lord, let us remember. Precious Lord, precious Lord, take my hand. Take my hand. Whatever it takes, Lord. For, to glorify you in everything we do. Father God, is there anything too hard for God? And we know what the answer is. There is nothing too hard for you. You are more than able. You are the wonderful Father, the mighty counselor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are our counselor. You are our deliverer. You are our healer. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, you can... You can take care of us in so many different ways. Let us never forget how much you love us, how much you care for us. You love us with an everlasting love. Let us never forget that. Father God, thank you, Jesus, Lord, that you love us. Lord, and Zephaniah, rejoice over us with singing. And Lord, we're going to come to praise you. Praise you. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, hallelujah, his praise should, should come from my mouth all the time. His praise, not my complaints, not my worries, not my concerns, but his praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, his praise. And that's what we're going to hear to do today. It's to praise you. It's to lift you up every day. Hallelujah. That like Moses at the burning bush, he turned aside. Hallelujah to see. And Moses, you know what? You're standing on holy ground. It's always holy ground when God is there. God, hallelujah. Let us never forget that. It's always about God's holiness. He said, be ye holy as I am holy. Oh, Father God, we lift you up tonight. Lord, Father God, that you will, would be in this service, Lord, because it's all about you. You said whether it's two or three touch and green, you be in the midst. And Lord, Lord, without you we have nothing, but with you we have everything. Oh, Father God, we want to thank you tonight. We want to praise you tonight that you are good. You are such a good God. Hallelujah. That, Lord, let that be the cry of our heart that we always do those things that please the Father. Oh, Lord, thank you tonight. We want to praise you tonight. We want to lift you up tonight. Because you are more than worthy, Lord. More than worthy, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. We come to bless your holy name. Father God. Oh, Paul said, I want to know you. To know him. To know him. To walk deeper and richer and fuller. To know him. That's what it's about. And Father God, we want to thank you. Father God, we want to praise you. For all that you've done for us in the past, all that you're doing right now, and all that you will do in the future. We give you the praise and the glory in your wonderful holy name. We pray amen and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. We'll go to our announcement. There you go. Please silence your cell phones. And still seeking Sunday school teachers. So if you uh, uh, feel God leading you there, uh, you know, please contact me. All right. Okay. And the Eastern Gate House of Prayer is going to be Friday, May 11, 2018. Okay. Put it on the calendar. Put it on the calendar. Okay. Let go and let God. Amen. Uh, Brother Ron, Ron, would you come up and take the offer and rest can be seated, please?
You are the one true God, creator of heaven and earth, Lord, redeemer of man.
praise the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is well with my soul. Praise God. He holds us in his loving arms. Praise the Lord. And all is well in Jesus. Praise God. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you, Suzanne. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Sometimes I think it's, it's not a bad thing for us to be reminded that... Uh, of course, we've got the advantages of electronics and so forth, but, you know, years ago, if people would bang on a wash tub or play the harmonica or juice harp or whatever, they'd praise the Lord. They'd make a joyful noise to the Lord. And I, I believe in the, to the ears of God, it's a beautiful sound when people worship Him from their heart. Amen. And uh, it's, it's great to have all the, uh, the benefits of uh, talent and, and uh, so on, but uh, you know, that's more for us than it is for the Lord, to be quite honest with you. He's He's happy with our, just our praise. Amen. With a joyful heart. Hallelujah. So, Amen. Praise the Lord. Thanks again, Suzanne. Thank you, Tim, for opening. And thanks, Tim, for last Wednesday night and Suzanne for Sunday. I appreciate that very much. And it means a lot to me to be able to know that I can be gone and, and everything's cool. Everything's going to happen like it's supposed to happen. And God's still going to be lifted up, amen, and church is going to go on, amen. Not as though I'm just so wrapped up in myself that I think it would stop, but amen. It's good to know that it's not just going to go on, it'll go on well, amen, is it the, without missing a beat, praise the Lord. So God bless both of you, and I thank you, and doing what you're doing, praise God. Amen. Somebody said, oh, the miracle, days of miracles are over. Well, that's just plain stupid, because... Uh, and I go buy organic vegetables and get home and I got donuts. <laughs> so Somehow, I don't know how it happens. But at home I got Bismarck's with raspberries in them. And God is good. Thank the Lord. Amen. Okay, well, enough of my stupidity, but... I'm gonna I'll, I'll, I'm gonna try to be brief tonight. It is a midweek, and uh, y'all been good. Praise the Lord. So I'll save the long one for Sunday. Praise God. <laughs> but I do have quite a few scriptures. So uh, Suzanne just be dancing on the keys back there. I want to begin with Isaiah 55, and I'd like to read verses 8 through 11. These are all familiar scriptures to y'all, but I just want to touch on a few things as we move forward here tonight. And uh, Isaiah 55, 8 through 11, it's one of my favorite scriptures, but uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 16. Praise the Lord. Someone got a new uh, stereo boombox in their car. Praise the Lord. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So on the one hand, God tells us in Isaiah that uh, his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. But when we get to the new covenant and we're born again, now he tells us that we have the mind of Christ. 
Paul tells us in another place, to put on the mind of Christ. Amen? And we have these things and we speak things that the world can't speak. We speak the promises of God. We speak, speak the truth of what God's Word says in spite of what the world might say. Amen? And you know, uh, just like we were talking before about how people, uh, their, their belief in God, their faith in God has an impact on us or other people. Our, our lives touch other people, whether we realize it or not. We're having an impact on people all the time, either positive or negative, for the Lord or, or not. And I just thought about how uh, the things that my neighbor... Now, my, my, my mother had it. She'd pray with us at night before we'd go to bed, you know, that now I lay me down to sleep kind of stuff. But that was enough. It was enough to set something into motion, you know what I mean? And then, of course, my neighbor, how she would pray with us all the time. And these, are, these things are foolishness to the unbeliever. But the closer you get drawn into it, the more real it becomes, the more pertinent it is, the more of a reality it becomes. And so I think that one of the things that uh, we, need to, we need to understand is that our, our confessions are a, are a testimony to our faith in God's Word. So when we, when we say what God says, my neighbor, Pauline was her name, Pauline Clark. And uh, she would pray, her son's name was Bob, and she'd pray over him and me before we'd go to school in the mornings. And she'd pray that we'd be saved every morning. I think she knew her son was going to be saved if he wanted to or not. <laughs> you know what I mean? But she wasn't so sure about me, but she prayed it every morning. And eventually it happened. I was 30-some years old before it happened, but it happened. And so she, she was confessing something. She was not just praying and begging God for something. She was confessing something. She was saying, what I, what I pray, what I believe, this is the will of God, that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we have that ability within our own families and with the, our, whatever our realm of uh, influence is, that just like I'm saying, me and my house will be saved. It doesn't always look that way. It didn't always look that way for me, that's for sure. For a long time, it didn't look like I was going to be saved. But God knows that when that seed is planted, what goes forth from God, if we'll say what God says, it'll come to pass. It, it may not happen even in our lifetimes. Amen? It didn't happen in Pauline's lifetime. I wasn't saved until after Pauline was, had passed away. But she knows. Amen? She, she knew it before I knew it, praise the Lord. But I'm just saying... We have that kind of an impact. And it's not just about seeing people saved, although that is the ultimate, but it's also about everything else that pertains to our life and the lives of those that we, are, that we care about. Amen? So let's go now. Uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. So we know how God's ways are not man's ways, but God's ways are the ways of His children. We emulate that. Amen? And we have the mind of Christ. So... If we know what God's ways are, he, he told us what His ways are. He says, my word, it goes forth out of my mouth and it doesn't come back void. It, it waters like the, like the rain waters the earth and forces it to produce. So you can go back to the beginning and see that that's the, that's the reality. You don't have to wait till Isaiah 55 to find it out. Because in the very beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, was doing nothing until God said, let there be light. Once God spoke, the Holy Spirit had something to work with. He moved, and light was. Praise the Lord. So, Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. I told you I had a lot of scriptures here at the beginning. Colossians 1 and verse 16. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things, everybody say all things, all things. were created by Him and for Him. Amen? All right, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word... The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. 
All things were made by Him, by the Word. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Praise the Lord. So the world, the worlds, amen, were framed by the Word of God. And we say that all the time, but this is, I mean, this is amazing when you think about it. Words created all of this and sustains it all. All right, Hebrews 11 and 3. We say sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That's a, that's a dumb saying. It's not true. Words have more power than sticks and stones, if you want to know the truth. Praise the Lord. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So the things that, things that are made were made, not made of things which are visible. The things that we now see came from the invisible. The, the tangible came from the, you could say, oral, from a word, right? The worlds were framed by the word of God. And they didn't exist until God spoke it. And words are invisible. I mean, we can see them up here, but what I'm saying is when we say it, you don't see it. You just, it's just there, right? All right. So Hebrews 1, verse 1 through 3. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, the Word, right? Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, set down at the right hand of majesty on high. So God's Word is what's holding the universe together. God's Word dominates the earth. Praise the Lord. Mark 11 and verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have... Whatsoever he saith. 1 Peter 1.23 Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So, as a believer, you are a living demonstration of the power of God's word. Amen. You're not just a forgiven sinner. You've been born again of the incorruptible seed. Remember God said, my seed, when I speak, it's like seed comes down, rain comes down, it waters the earth and forces it to produce. His word does that. Amen. So you've been born again of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Your spirit has been recreated the way the earth was created. By a word. The same way Jesus was conceived in Mary. By the word of God. What did Mary do to make that happen? All Mary did to make it happen was be it unto me as she became the earth that the rain fell on and it was forced to produce. That's what happens to us when we believe God. We are created, born again, by the Word of God, by incorruptible seed. In other words, by seed that can't fail. Seed that has to produce after its kind. Words are the most important thing there is on earth. Words delivered you out of the kingdom of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Words did that. Amen. Romans 10.10. 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, or words, confession is made unto salvation. That's how your life in God began. That's how you were born into the kingdom. That's how you were born of God. And it's how you're supposed to continue living after you get born into the kingdom of God. 
You're supposed to receive everything from God by speaking faith in agreement with what God's Word says. That's how you got born. That's how everything is born into your life. That's how everything is produced in your life. Whether it's healing, whether it's finances, whether it's the salvation of family members, whatever it is, that's how it happens. It doesn't happen some other way. It isn't happenstance. It isn't luck. It isn't just, you know, the, the stars aligned and everything was perfect and it just happened. It happens because of words. Praise the Lord. All right, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, all right, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, however it was you received Him, and we just read how you received Him, amen, so walk ye with Him. If you received Him by words, then you walk in Christ, or you live your life in Christ by words. Amen? God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is moving in you. He's moving over you and around you. Right this moment, right this very second. To heal your body. To prosper you. To bring you everything that God has promised. But just like in creation, just like in the original creation, He's waiting on your words of faith. Because He was just hovering. He was there. He was moving. But He wasn't doing a flipping thing until somebody spoke. And then he had something to work with. Then he had something to move on. Something to act on. Amen? He's waiting on words. Words of faith. Whatever you're saying by faith is what you're going to get. Now, God didn't say, let there be light, and then say, wow, that, it's still dark. Am I right? That's kind of what we do. I'm healed, but well, i still got symptoms. Or... I'm prospered, but I still got this overdraft. You know, I, you know what I mean? That's, that's just human nature. But that's, that undermines us. Because words have power. We are children of God. We are spirit beings. And when we say things, stuff happens. Good or bad. Amen? Look at Joel chapter 3 and verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Amen? Let the weak say, I am strong. All right, look at Ephesians then, chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. There's your word. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Let the weak say, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might. I am strong. Praise the Lord. When you speak that, the Holy Spirit begins to go to work. In your situation, in your body, in your whatever. Amen. God's Word will dominate the weak condition and you become strong. Amen. Just like the Holy Spirit moved on the words, let there be light. He moves on your words. They will not come back void. Praise the Lord. You've got, to stay, you've got to stay committed to it. You've got to exercise faith in it. You've got to believe what God said. Amen? Praise the Lord. All right, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. What is Jesus is the Word? Amen. We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, or in the Word, or even by the Word, unto good works. God hath before ordained that we should walk in this. That we should walk in the Word. That we should walk in the power. God's own faith. Not our faith, it's His faith. We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, which God before ordained. It's by grace that it might be by faith, His faith. He gave you the faith 
and the Word and what happens now is up to us. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Praise the Lord. 3 John 2. 3 John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospered. That's the will of God. That's the wish of God. Amen? That you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. The way you think. The way you react to the Word of God. The way you respond to the Word of God. Alright, 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that you, through His poverty, might be rich. He paid for your, for your prosperity the same as He paid for your healing. He paid for your prosperity the same as He paid for, paid for your righteousness. He became sin. Amen? So you've been given the Word. And you have to give the Holy Spirit something to work with. Because the Holy Spirit is waiting on us. He moves when we speak words of faith. The Holy Spirit, that's, that's what He does. He moves immediately. He moves to make that a reality. So your faith, the problem that we have is because we live in a body. It's not who we are. It's just what we happen to live in. And that thing has feelings. Sense realm. And that's the issue, is we give more influence to the to the flesh to the to the sense realm than we do to the spirit realm even though our true identity is spirit so your faith isn't based on your feelings it's based on what god's word says amen it's based on what god's word said and jesus's faithfulness to that word praise the lord so look at hebrews chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So think about the fact that he is the high priest. He's our high priest. Amen. Who was faithful to him that appointed him. Now Moses was faithful in all his house. Moses was the high priest at the time. You know, he was the mediator of that covenant. And he was faithful to that covenant. He was faithful to God. Right? Well, Jesus is more faithful, greater, no, no failure. Amen. Holy Partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. The high priest of what it is we're saying. Amen. He has been appointed by God to back up every word of faith that you speak. Praise the Lord. And He can back it up with power. You can count on Him whether you feel anything or not, your feelings have nothing to do with it. He is our high priest. His job is to make sure that what we say, according to this word, it gets done. It becomes a reality. All right? Last scripture. 1 John 4 and 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So don't stop speaking words of faith. This is just a reminder. We know this stuff, but we live in a world that is so contrary to this that we get sidetracked all the time by the soul realm, by the sense realm, by our feelings, by our experiences amen that's why we have to be constantly reminded that this is who we are this is our true identity this is what we do and because it's our identity we have to operate this way it won't happen any other way it won't happen just because God's good the reason it'll happen is because we not only not only is God good but we believe that God is good and we respond to him in that way 
Amen? The same power that created the universe is inside of you. I mean, that's, that is freaky. The thing that hung this all in space, the thing that made this all happen, and the thing that sustains it is inside of you right this minute. Say the word and let him work miracles for you. That's your natural, supernatural behavior. That's your God-given heritage. Speak to things that are not as though they are. Amen? As the rain comes down and forces the ground to produce, so is His Word that comes forth out of His mouth. It cannot come back void. How many of you all know you are the mouth of God? You're the body of Christ. What you say in faith, in agreement with His Word, it has to produce. We just have to stay faithful to it. We have to validate what God's Word... This is the part of put, making His enemies His footstools. He's defeated them. Our part is to make that reality visible. To make it a reality here and now. Sickness, disease, poverty, all those enemies, all, all the things that are not in heaven. Amen? No poverty in heaven. Those are, are to be here. That's the, that's the deal with the prayer. It isn't a rote prayer, but thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The only way that happens is by us. Amen? We were born again the same way this universe was created. We were born again the same way Jesus was created. By the word of God. Forcing a production. And it'll happen in our lives if we do it. If we'll be consistent. If we'll do like Jesus and only say what the Father says. We'll get the results that Jesus got. He said greater works than these will do. Because I go to my Father. Meaning that the Holy Spirit's coming back. And whatever you say, He's activated to produce. Light be, and He got to make him light. Amen? Be healed. And He's there for healing. He's there to deliver that healing. He is the Word. Amen? He is, I mean, the Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory, the Spirit of God. That's the Spirit. That's the Word of God. We just have to speak it and see it come to pass. And you say, praise the Lord. Talk some stuff, man. I mean, you talk about talking trash. We could... Get that devil, get into a trash talk and deal with the devil, and he'll run like his hair's on fire. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks again, Tim and Suzanne. Thanks, everybody, for being here tonight. Hope we'll see you back here Sunday. Have a great rest of the week. It's supposed to be nice. I'm confessing that. Did you hear me, devil? Good weather. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Dismissed in Jesus' name.